Hello and welcome to a deeper dive into the Formula E races. Some people have trouble winning. You can see I've already won this one. Let's go over to a speed snap event. I'm going to make this as hard as possible on myself. So look at that target, 193.5. You've been accidentally doing this all along. Every time you win a race, it's going to get a little bit more difficult next time around. If you win by a big amount, you'll get even more difficult. So if you want to wrap it up quickly, go to something like this, a short speed snap, and just win it a whole bunch of times. So let's see what this does here. Check the difference. There we go. See, 194.2. It's already getting more difficult. So you keep doing this until you start getting a repeat number showing, okay? And that's only if you want to make this as difficult as possible. I'm also going to show you how to do this in reverse order. But first, you need to know some Formula E strategies because Formula E can be difficult for people. So look at this. I just kept on winning and winning and I'm just showing you the, the screens I was getting. So 195.2, I think that might be the peak. So let's just check this out. I'm going to run this again. And you'll notice here, there's even strategy here. So watch, I go to the right. And then I start my left hand turn quite early so I can stay full throttle, staying off that wall, winning over 200 kilometers an hour every single time, which isn't too difficult. That's pretty good. Look at that. 195.2. This time around, we're going four times regular speed. You've already seen this enough. And whoa, 205. Okay, that's definitely as hard as it gets. So let's go over to the race now. This is a hard race, okay? Well, it's it might be hard. Now check this out. I got a full tuning. However, my driver is at the minimum level of one and my principal is at the minimal level of one. I've spent nothing to increase their abilities. So my car is actually not going to be very good here. So this is hard, the hardest setting. Tilt B controls, sensitivity to all assists off. Now, what am I doing here? I want to see what the targets are like. Like that's pretty fast. 357.8 was the top bot. So now they might be faster this time around or not. Of course, it depends how the race goes, but that can be an indicator of whether it's working or not. So I've brought in two other views, which can be interesting to see. And also I'm making sure you see the charge the whole time. Now, what's different about Formula E racing? You, ooh, that's really crappy. <laughs> well, let's just keep on going. You really need, need to make use of your charge and you really need to avoid damage, which hopefully I don't think that was a damaging incident. But you're going to watch this here, and I've, I've got very little race volume because they're just annoying sounding, <laughs> but there's a little bit. You've got to get off that, that the throttle early. We're going to call it throttle, it's not gas, or the power. We've got, you've got to get off the throttle early to coast a bit, to build up charge. And here, I kind of blew it. You want to get as much slipstreaming or drafting in as possible. Absolutely as much as possible. So whenever you see my speed turning yellow, that means I'm slipstreaming, okay? You see the uh, the charge indicator there? That's really just a time function. So whenever you're on the throttle, ooh, you got to avoid sliding like that. Whenever you're on the throttle, it's draining. So the faster your car, the more distance you're traveling per time, okay? Does that make sense? You're traveling more track for the length that you're on that throttle. So that's why slipstreaming like this is so critical because you need to make maximum use of when you're on the power. So I've got to make sure I do as much as I can. That means both getting a push and getting a tow. So getting a push is when they're behind you. you now he's too far behind me uh, to really engage it. So I'm going to get a tow from this guy. But I also want to get up to that first bot as soon as possible. Scraping by him. So it's the we're going to be about the middle of the second lap before I'm catching slipstream from this next bot. I should be able to get into the lead. Oh boy, I'm being a little bit sloppy. Got to be very careful. You don't want to slide off track. Any sliding you're doing while you're on the power is wasting charge because you're losing momentum. So you've got to be very careful. Don't necessarily, I mean, you could fly through the corkscrew here, take a cut. I'm not doing that. I'm doing this legit. Everything I'm doing is legal racing. So I'm not going to do any cutting. Uh, taking that corkscrew though would definitely help. Uh, you guys, if you if you're a fan of my channel, or I mean, even if you just even if you're not a fan, if you watch my videos, you know I love taking jumps there. So you can fly through the corkscrew and definitely save time. But I want to show you how to do this legit. So I'm not ah boy, this whole section here, I really should have been getting either a toe or a push. That was uh, not the greatest move on my part. Oh boy. Okay, now they take the section very badly. I'll catch him right here. I'll catch Bird. And I don't necessarily want to get in the lead yet. 
because I'm getting low. I'm getting down to that 5% charge. So I'm going to stay hooked up here for a while. It's easier to get a tow than it is to get a push. Because when they're pushing you, if you're less than 10 meters, they start dodging, I've noticed. But I'm getting low here. The advantage is I can control this. So watch where I try to drive. I'm watching the distance marker. So when you get around that 9, 10 meters, it's okay. He's already trying to get around me though. So now I, I, now I need to drive in the race line. I need to block him. You have to know where bots drive. They often are not driving in the optimal line, but you need to know where they drive so you can block them or get a push. So that's what I'm doing now. You can see this is getting really low and you see me making use of that coasting, right? No pedals on at all right now. Now I want to get a push. Charge is getting really low. He's way back there. There we go. That's how you do this legitimately on the hardest setting possible. Fast lap times, one minute 11. So now I want to change it to easy. I want to show you how to do that. So to do that, you lose a lot. I've got a completely unserviced car. There are some rules to this, which we will get into. So we're going to do this four times regular speed. I'm going to slow down to make sure I lose and see here if it works huh it didn't go down okay well let's try this again sometimes it takes more than one shot and let's see if it's working no okay well this is very strange let's try something different and that is let's service the car since i'm trying to make a video i'm just going to pay for it quick and let's just see if this works okay again 195.3 same speed i'm facing every single time do this really fast and there we go that is the answer okay let's get into the rules your servicing must be in the green okay that is critical rule two finish in last place that's the best thing to do rule three this will only change the difficulty for races in the exact same series you do it in the last rule is kind of silly but if you go in reverse you can go any speed you want because speeds don't count in reverse i went over 200 kilometers an hour it doesn't count so here you can see speeds dropping down and eventually the speeds might actually start going up again that's when you know it's at the easiest check this out though the last placed or easiest bot from the hard race now becomes the second hardest bot in this race. Now he didn't get more difficult. He's the exact same difficulty. So that means that all the bots under him are way weaker. And this is going to shock you at the difference you're going to see. We're not going to do this whole race because it would be very boring. We're going to do basically one full lap. I'll show you a part of the first lap and then part of the last lap. So just look at this as I'm heading into the first hairpin. It all looks the same until you get here. Boom, I'm already in 10th place. Nine, eight, seven, six. And you know, the very quickly six, five, four. It's, it's just crazy. You can see this is really, really easy. So now you could still run out of power though if you don't drive this correctly. What does that mean? You still need to coast. You still only have 32 units of power. Look at this, I'm already in first place and like I'm maybe halfway through the lap. I don't even think I, well, maybe halfway through the lap. So look at this. Now I'm gonna get a push from behind. You gotta make sure you get, you make use of that drafting or slip streaming. And then here I'm gonna get a little bit of a toe, but I might as well overtake them at the corkscrew. And you can see like they drive, they drive horrible, absolutely horrible. So you could take this as slow as you want, but you want to make advantage of that getting a push. So look how much of a charge left I have now. Last time on the hardest setting, I was below 5% by a good amount. I look at the horde behind me, whoop, I released the horde. But who cares? Watch how much he breaks here. It's almost embarrassing. So I'm just showing you how much charge you could have left over. Um, I showed you the legitimate way to do it on the hardest setting. Now we're on the easiest setting. I have all sorts of power in reserve. Like, look at that, that's ridiculous. Although this made the race one minute and one second longer, I was on the throttle so much less. So one of these methods will work for you. Please check out some other videos. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you on the track.